So me being around 100 kilos at the maximum dose of Anadrol, I should be administered 500 milligrams every single day until I'm no longer anemic. Now imagine if I um, you know, continue that and get my hematocrit up to, let's say, 56 or 60%, which is already borderline crazy. So I believe that anything over um, hormone replacement therapy, slightly super physiological based on the reference ranges, which are nowadays quite feminist, I would say, anything over that, your endurance will go down. Your stamina will be horrible. I mean, ask any bodybuilder how good their stamina is. Would they be able to do a race with real endurance athletes? Of course not. Vigor Steve here with part four of the Optimized Endurance Deep Dive video series, which is part two of the performance enhancing drug segments. In part one of the PEDs, we already discussed cookie cutter hormone replacement therapy, bring your sex hormones and neurosteroids to the top of the reference range or slightly super physiological. And I believe anything over that will probably just hinder your endurance and overall stamina during long distance sports. So why would you? We also discussed how to optimize or rather yet modulate mitochondrial function with several compounds which are not found on the World Anti-Doping Agency prohibited list of 2023 and neither are they included in the monitoring program of 2023. But let's see in the updated 2024 versions, those will be released sometime in September or October of this year. And when they are released, you can bet your HPTA that I will make an updated WADA approved half natty doping stack of 2024. Stay tuned, subscribe now so you can get it firsthand right when it drops. In this video, I want to discuss optimizing oxygen carrying capacity. Basically, long story short, we're going to talk about erythropoietin EPO, some of the erythropoiesis stimulating agents, which are derivatives of human recombinant erythropoietin. Right? Before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'm not just saying that. If this video gets 5,000 to 10,000 views, there should be 5,000 to 10,000 likes as well right make it so if you want to support the channel you can do so by joining either the youtube or patreon memberships where you can vote for upcoming deep dives or join the weekly vigorous q a which is always on saturday so you have a hundred percent chance to get your questions answered privately before we go public and it turns into a super chat super flood now what do i mean with erythropoiesis stimulating agents these are compounds several classes of drugs which stimulate the bone marrow to produce red blood cells, and they're generally prescribed in medical conditions to treat anemia caused by end-stage kidney disease or full-blown kidney failure, chemotherapy, major surgeries, or certain treatments revolving around HIV or AIDS. In these situations, many cases, these erythropoiesis stimulating agents are administered either subcutaneous or intravenously. But I'm sure you guys are all familiar, and what I want to highlight at the start of this video is that many androgens are also considered erythropoiesis stimulating agents, particularly oxymetalone, anadrol, which is actually medically prescribed to help in particular cases of anemia. Now, the problem is all of these are included on the WADA prohibited list of 2023 and have been on the WADA prohibited list for decades now. So if you want to use testosterone, nandrolone, uh, dianabol, anadrol, halotestin, winstrol, parabolin, that's the trembolone, right? The trembolone sandwich. Provirin, Masterone, Primabolin, Equipoise, Testret, which is methyl testosterone, as well as Androstanolone, which is dihydrotestosterone. Yes, you can use these to improve your overall red blood cell counts, increase your hematocrit, and thus improve the overall oxygen carrying capacity of your blood. But will they improve your endurance? Probably not. All of these compounds, the anabolic androgenic steroids, increase your energy consumption, improve mitochondrial function to a certain extent, and thus reactive oxygen species, but we already discussed that in previous videos, your energy demand will go up a lot more compared to the oxygen carrying capacity resulting in optimized endurance. So I believe that anything over um, hormone replacement therapy, slightly super physiological based on the reference ranges, which are nowadays quite feminist, I would say, anything over that, your endurance will go down. Your stamina will be Horrible. I mean, ask any bodybuilder how good their stamina is. Would they be able to do a race with real endurance athletes? Of course not. So, when you look at the medical literature for oxymetolone anadrol, for example, the dosages which are prescribed in cases of severe anemia just bring you back to normal levels of hematocrit and red blood cell counts in serum. 
that's anywhere between one milligram to five milligram per one kilogram of body weight. So me being around 100 kilos at the maximum dose of anadrol, I should be administered 500 milligrams every single day until I'm no longer anemic. Now imagine if I, um, you know, continue that and get my hematocrit up to, let's say, 56 or 60 percent, which is already borderline crazy. Um, I'll be a, literally a walking tank and the increase in body temperature and the increase in body mass and the overall increased energy demand and the profuse sweating that will come along with that. Horrible endurance. I'm sure of it. Shin splints, lower back cramps and pumps, etc. So I would leave all of the anabolic androgenic steroids off the table. Just f solely focus on the cookie cutter hormone replacement therapy. Leave it be unless you're just recovering from surgery or some of the other um, uh, medical conditions that these anabolic steroids are actually prescribed in. So leave them up the table. Let's just go over to the erythropoiesis compounds. But before you do, if you're going to change and improve your hematocrit and increase your red blood cell count, let's do an MRI with contrast to see if your heart is functioning correctly. At the same time, let's do a CT angiogram with contrast to see if you have any soft or hard plaque within the coronary arteries or other arteries surrounding your heart. Might as well do a full body MRI to see if you have any issues with blood flow in other organs, because the last thing you want is a blood clot. And that's a serious risk that comes along with erythropoietic compounds, increased platelets and increased red blood cells and thus increased clotting risk. All right. Does that sound familiar of this day and age? Increased clotting risk. All right. Take this to heart and be very, very careful if you want to use these performance enhancing drugs for yourself to improve your overall endurance. So CT scan, MRI, get a sleep apnea diagnosed because your hematocrit might already be high. Maybe the reason why your endurance is terrible at the moment is because you're simply not sleeping throughout the night. So get your sleep apnea diagnosed. Your hematocrit might already be high and you don't need any of these compounds to bring your hematocrit up. You probably have to get your sleep apnea under control with an APAP or CPAP machine. If you go this route, make sure you can do weekly or bi-weekly blood work to check your complete blood count. That's your hemoglobin levels, which you can actually check at home with a at-home hemoglobin tester. I'll link it down below. You can buy those on Amazon. Check your hematocrit, duh, and check your red blood cell count. Now, if that means that you have to go in for blood work every two weeks, but it takes two weeks for you to get the results back, or worse, a month, Right, that happens also in some countries. It takes a month before you get your blood work results back. If it takes anything longer than two days, it's already outdated. So you can't make the appropriate adjustment and get off the EPO or some of its derivatives or do a therapeutic blood donation, which is also something you need to have on standby somewhere close in case you do go too high, right? I would say that anything over 56 to 60% is too high. A therapeutic blood donation would take anywhere between two to three points off, depending on how much plasma you're donating, and if you're doing a power red donation, which returns some of the plasma, right? This is also something you have, need to have on standby. So again, blood work somewhere close by, which you can do frequently and get the results back in a hurry, and the place where you can do therapeutic blood donations if needed. Supplements or medications to regulate blood viscosity, like fish oil, vitamin E, baby aspirin. You need to be knowledgeable about those and have them on standby or run them Continuously, I'm personally I'm on fish oil and vitamin E in a small dose year round. Supplements or medications to regulate your blood pressure, electrolytes. Right, I have separate videos about that and an article on my website. Read it before you start dappling with EPO. Carnitone, the herbal extracts, PDE5 inhibitors like Cialis, ACE inhibitors like C uh, lisinopril, ARBs like telomersartan. Now we get to an issue here. Telomersartan can actually regulate hematocrit levels and keep that within the reference range. So if you want to, again, it doesn't play out for everybody. And if you're on a lot of a bold and prima ball and or anadrol, that will certainly not be the case. So all the people with blanket statements saying that tell Sartan and you will never have to do a, a blood donation ever again. Guess how many people get into the hospital by just blindly following that advice. Do your blood work. You will see on a heavy cycle, even with 80 milligrams tell Sartan per day, you might still have to do a therapeutic blood donation because you get over 56% on your hematocrit, right? Blood work will tell you the final story. Don't listen to these guys saying that you never have to donate by taking an ARB. That's just stupid. Okay, so Tomasartan, Analopril, right? These are blood pressure medications, which actually 
suppressing your hematocrit and red blood cell count potentially. Avoid compounds which are known to reduce and modulate hematocrit. <laughs> IP6, telmosartan, and nanopurble. Yet again, high dose methylene blue. Like I mentioned in the previous video, the therapeutic dose of methylene blue to improve your overall endurance might be anywhere between 0 0.25 milligrams to 1 milligram per kilo of body weight. So the dosages I mentioned there was between 25 milligrams to 100 milligrams based on the general weight of people who are into optimizing their endurance. But it also means that the longer you take methylene blue at a higher dose, some people actually go anemic. I've had several consultations since then of people who, um, you know, were close to anemic and they were taking 100 milligrams of methylene blue to improve their overall performance and uh, mitochondrial function and get, you know, all of the benefits of methylene blue, which there are many. And their metagrid ended up somewhere between 37 to 42 percent on cycle, right? So methylene blue has to be respected. You need to do your blood work frequently to assess if your hematocrit is coming down. So if you want to use erythropoietic compounds, I would say limit the methylene blue to a, you know, a, a productive dose of, let's say, 5 milligrams per day. Supplements, I mentioned in part one, to increase oxygen carrying capacity, right? That's a B100 complex. Some of the B vitamins help with the red blood cell production, as well as iron ferrous bisglycinate chelate, also known as ferrochel, or vitamin C and copper, right? I explain everything in the previous videos. Now, some of these erythropoiesis stimulating agents might go well with anti-hypoxia medications, which I discussed in part one of the PED segments, right? Bemethyl, hypoxin, and amoxapine, right? Or look into these combinations. I've talked to several athletes who combined erythropoietic compounds with bemethyl or hypoxin or amoxapine, and they said they got great results. Now, 